So now in this video we're going to look at this circuit. So right now the LED is off. When I cover the light dependent resistor the LED turns on. And it's going to stay on for a while because this is a 1000 microfarad capacitor. And uh, we're going to use smaller value capacitors later on. But uh, you're going to see here that uh, by making the light dependent resistor dark the LED turned on and it's going to stay on for a period of time. So the amount of time, since we're going to use the same value resistors, there we go, finally turned off, is going to depend on the value of the capacitor. And so from now on we'll use smaller value capacitors so that it goes quicker. But in any case, I just drew up uh, this circuit today. I just put it together. I thought it up and uh, designed it and everything and then had to move components around and stuff until I got a uh, working prototype that I liked. But in any case, I hope you enjoy it. So now to begin with, we're using the NE555 right there. The ground pin is pin number one right there. And the VCC, the positive side of the power supply pin is pin eight. So we're powering it. Pin number six here is the threshold pin. We don't want it to do anything. It's waiting for two thirds of the power supply voltage or more. And uh, we put it to the negative rail. That is uh, much less than two-thirds of the power supply voltage it's as far as you can get and so that prevents it from doing anything I have this jumper here that is the output which on the schematic is on the right side we couldn't see that earlier we'll add the uh, resistor in the LED and this will reduce clutter it'll make it easier to see the circuitry there so now since we have this space over there we'll wire the protective resistor and LED. So even though the protective uh, resistor is to the output on the schematic, we're going to put the LED. So it doesn't matter, they're in series. All that matters is the polarity of the LED. The long lead, the anode, has to be towards the output. We're going to put it directly to the output. Short lead, the cathode, is going to head towards the negative rail. I have a jumper down there. Helps keep things out of the way. And so this is a one kilo ohm, 1000 ohm resistor. It's still going to protect the LED just the same on this side right here so we'll put it there there's more flexibility with the resistor and uh, so there we have it and there is our wiring now you can see we got uh, pin 1 to the negative rail as we said before pin 5 to the positive pin 6 to the negative rail to prevent it from doing anything now let's get to the actual circuitry that makes all of this happen for the uh, timing and whatnot. So this stuff's going to be closer to the camera so we'll start up here. So pin 2 is called the trigger pin and so it is waiting for a low signal and so well, we don't want it to get a low signal right away so we'll add a light dependent resistor but before we do let's add a 56 kilo ohm resistor and uh, there it is just because it's uh, gonna be a little harder to see so that's going to the negative rail 56 kilo ohm 56,000 ohms and now it's going to the trigger pin I turned the power off so we don't have to worry about short circuit anything but uh, there you can see right there the uh, negative rail to the trigger pin and we'll take the light dependent resistor and that goes to the positive rail so 5 volts which you can't really see right now there we go and uh, so you got that there I got it next to that jumper I don't know if I need to but uh, it's kind of getting tight there but uh, I don't want to short circuit but I think we'll be alright now we are going to take a 10 kilo ohm resistor and put that from pin 2 to pin 4 and I'll talk about why we have this resistor here. It's a little odd, but uh, it'll make sense later on. So pin 2 to pin 4, the trigger pin and the reset pin. It's connecting the two of them with resistance. Now, we'll grab a 100,000 ohm resistor, 100 kilo ohm. And you won't always see the omega symbol on the schematic. I decided to add it with all the resistors there and uh, a lot of times you'll just see 100k so it's the same as 100 kilo ohms so that goes to the negative rail the light dependent resistor is the only
component other than the 555 timer that goes to the positive rail. And we are going to grab a 470 microfarad capacitor, so half the value of the 100,000 micro or a uh, 1,000 microfarad capacitor. And uh, that does not want to go in right now. Unfortunately, let's try putting that side in first. And let's try turning it so I'm not blocking. I got really bent bad. There we go. So, there, now you can see it. Goes there and then to the negative rail. As you can see right there. So, pin 4 to the negative rail, as is the 100 kilo ohm resistor there. And you can see the 10 kilo ohm between 2 and 4. And then we have a voltage divider up there, which is kind of getting blocked right now. But, in any case, so far, looks pretty good we'll turn the power on and so we should probably give the capacitor a little bit of time to charge I think so power is on and now I'll cover the uh, light dependent resistor as soon as I cover it as soon as the light dependent resistor sees that it's dark then the output went high and so it should be about half the time that it took before before it goes off so that's with the 470 microfarad capacitor. And uh, I have here a 47 microfarad capacitor and a 100 microfarad capacitor. But we'll just go right to the uh, small one. And uh, again, the output does not go high until the light dependent resistor goes dark. And then this is only 47 microfarad. So now I just did something. I didn't hold it long enough I think is the problem I didn't make it dark long enough and now the LED is on and it is staying on and I found the way to clear that is just to you know start the process make it dark until it goes out and now we are back to normal so that's the nice thing about these uh, small value capacitors if you're using these value resistors the process goes a lot quicker so let's uh, look at the uh, process of what is going on. So here we zoomed into the uh, timing part of this. So to begin with, the output is low right now. That's because pin two is waiting for a low signal, as is pin four. Neither one of them is getting them uh, right now. And the reason why is because the light dependent resistor has enough resistance now where it's probably just a tiny bit over 100 ohms right now. I can lower it with a light like that but uh, this is enough light right now and so compared to 56,000 ohms right here this is practically no resistance with the light on so that's going directly to pin 2 it's got a high signal it's not doing anything here's a 10 kilo ohm resistor that goes to pin 4 again we have that positive signal so we have a uh, capacitor here and a resistor that both go to the negative rail but this is 100 kilo ohms going there. That's only 10 kilo ohms and you know somewhere around about 100 right now with the light the way it is. So now when we cover the light dependent resistor, it has millions of ohms of resistance. I've looked at that in other videos. So compared to millions of ohms, uh, 56 kilo ohms is practically nothing resistance wise. And uh, so it's almost like a direct connection to pin 2. Now there is some resistance but uh, it's it's uh, somewhat close compared to millions of ohms. And so in any case we have that negative connection there and then through the resistor here we got rid of the positive and so again it's negative. The capacitor is going to start discharging and uh, it's also going to discharge through the 100 uh, kilo ohm resistor. The extra current was going through there before, but it's also going to discharge here. So it's got a couple of discharge paths. And so we got the low signal there, so that set the output high. When the reset pin gets a low signal, then it sets the output low, and uh, which it is after you cover that long enough. The uh, capacitor discharges until it gets a low enough voltage and then it sets the output low and holds it low no matter what. Now we release the light dependent resistor and we get a high signal to pin 2. It doesn't do anything with the high signal at all and then we get a high signal 
to a pin 4 which after the capacitor charges which doesn't do anything at all it just leaves the output in the state that it is in but it charges it until we cover this again and get a low signal to uh, set the output high and to get the capacitor to start discharging until it gets low enough to reset it and set the output back low so in any case hopefully that all made sense as I said before I just designed this uh, completely myself today so I'm pretty pretty proud of it I'm sure there's a lot of improvements to be made and there's probably a good chance that there is a much more straightforward way to do this this is a 100 microfarad uh, capacitor and uh, it probably reset every time I bounced around there but uh, there you can see we uh, aren't doing too bad with this one either so you can change the capacitance I haven't had good luck with making major changes to the resistor uh, values and uh, and so I think you kinda gotta go with as close to these values as you can to get it to work the way that I do uh, right now I think if you use lower value uh, capacitors it might not work at all hope you enjoy the circuit thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one